All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, first off, I don't know much about the South Carolina situation. I know I'll be asked about it. I just, what I've seen on Twitter and all that stuff. Um, so we're hopeful that, that, you know, that those guys are all, all good down there uh, and that we're going to be able to play tomorrow. Um, we'll see. Uh, Frank's done a really good job with their team. Um, you know, big win against Florida State. Uh, we know how difficult it is to beat those guys. Um, they're playing very well lately. Um, just typical Frank Martin teams, very aggressive defensively, uh, aggressive offensive rebounding, defensive rebounding team, very good in transition. Um, and, you know, they have good depth. They play a lot of players. So uh, it'll be interesting to see, you know, what transpires. But, you know, um, certainly hope, you know, the health of their players is is number one. And, and uh, you know, we'll see what happens with the game. But we'd love to get a chance to play. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. When's the last time you <coughs> talked to Frank about it? Talking about I haven't it? talked to Frank. Um, I know there's been conversations between the ADs and, and uh, our ops guys, I think, talked this morning and, you know, I know they're still planning on trying to come if it works out, but I think they're testing today and, you know, obviously need some negative tests. Um, so that, that's really all I know. Is this um, is this another, obviously it is a concern for you guys yeah. going forward uh, as you get more and more into the season with game being indoors and all, right? Yeah, it is. Um, you know, it's funny. We, we talked about it a little bit as a staff um, probably four or five days ago, just kind of reminding our players that it seems that cases are up everywhere. And, you know, this is a, a scary time for your team because, you know, once it gets into your team, you just don't know, you know, what it's going to mean. And um, taking pauses is difficult. Um, we know that from last year. Uh, and, you know, we all like, we all like to know, we all like certainty. We like, routine, we like schedule, uh, we like organization, and, and obviously this this changes all of that. Um, so, you know, you do the best you can to stay safe and hope for the best, but, you know, things happen. And, uh, you know, it seems, uh, I guess it's a little disappointing. Obviously, you watch all the fall sports, you know, get to kind of conclude their seasons and get through things seem to be pretty well. Hopeful that the same would be for us. We've been okay to date, but now all you do is look around college basketball and you see a lot of cancellations. And so, you know, we're certainly um, not anywhere out of the woods that this thing might just be getting started here uh, with everybody going indoors. And what does that mean moving forward? I think, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. I'd be disappointed too, be the second year in a row for the Gamecocks. You guys have had this happen. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's unfortunate last year. Um, I think they developed COVID and, and right before our game and we couldn't go down there and, and, uh, it, games are hard to make up um, because conference games are so important that then squeezing one in is challenging. Um, you know, obviously, certainly enjoy playing them. The rivalry is important, um, but you know, coaches have to do what's best for their programs and and uh, obviously take care of their kids. And so, uh, you know, we'll see. But it is unfortunate that you know, second year in a row where we've kind of gotten into this situation. We'll see. From a preparation standpoint, not knowing who's going to be on the court for them. I mean, what kind of. Yeah, that, that I mean, that changes it a little bit. Just, you know, certainly, again, we like to be prepared. We like to know what's going on. Um, you know, it, it, it makes it a little more challenging not knowing exactly who you're preparing for because, you know, that may dictate how they play, changes they may make. Um, so, but you just do the best you can and try to get your team ready. We've, you know, we had a little uh, walk through and, and did some shooting this morning. We'll have practice this afternoon and, you know, hope that, you know, we find out some good news from South Carolina that, that things are better down there and, and, you know, they're okay to play. Has there been any considerations as far as little more safety precautions, or not safety precautions for you guys or anything like any talks about? Nothing drastic. Um, you know, we still, we wear masks when we're, in a, any kind of room setting together. Um, I think that's something we're going to have to talk about, um, you know, with our trainers and doctors is, is, is it, are we at a point where, um, you know, do we need to not meet in, in small rooms like we did last year, last year we met upstairs and, and, you know, we stayed 
six feet apart as much as we could. This year we've worn masks um, and kind of gone back to normal um, as much as you can. But, um, you know, we still try to be cautious. Obviously, we've, we've got a large, large majority. Almost our whole team is vaccinated. Um, so that helps a little bit, although, you know, the boosters obviously becoming more and more important. And, you know, I don't think we're in very good numbers with that yet. So we'll have to start you know, talking about that, I think, a good bit. That's what I was going to ask. Nick. Some guys aren't eligible yet. They, I don't think their time has passed. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. When guys start getting eligible, do you, do you encourage it? Because it Yeah, you certainly encourage it. But, yeah. you know, it's their choice and, you know, they got to do what they think is best for them. But certainly we do encourage it. And the athletic department's always done a good job of trying to help with that as much as they can. With this game returning, I mean, are the guys excited, looking forward to it, given that last year they weren't able to, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think guys always excited about this game. It's it's a competitive game, two very, you know, physical teams that go at each other every year. You know, it's, you know, it, it's been, I guess I've played 10 of these now. Last year would have been my 11th. And um, I don't even know exactly what, you know, how many we've won, how many we've lost, but I know it's really close. Uh, you know, might be five, five, might be six, four, one way, but it's, it's very close. They've been very competitive games. Um, you know, I, it was, I, I, I could tell my guys were a little disheartened today when I told them, Hey guys, you know, there's a chance the game won't happen. We'll have to wait and see. And, um, you know, kids want to play. Just personal wise, how do you see PJ really kind of come along um, during the past few games? Uh, you know, I think PJ's played well. Um, most of the time, I think, you know, he didn't play quite as well as I would have liked in some of the, the Miami game, the recent game. Um, but he's developing nicely. Um, you know, again, we've talked about he can score in a lot of different ways. He's got good hands. Um, he's a great teammate. I think that's, you know, in this day and age, I think that's, you know, when you have a real, your really good players are great teammates. I think that is very valuable. Um you know, he's had a little bit of a foot injury that's been bothering him some. And so we, we've had to try to monitor that. He's missing some practices um, to try to rest him. Um, you know, there's a little concern from my standpoint with that, because sometimes kids don't, if they're not practicing every day, they lose a little rhythm and timing, especially younger players. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we just got to manage it. We got to do the best we can with him, but he's, he's off to a fantastic start. Uh, you know, he's having a, a very good sophomore season, which we thought he would. What is it about South Carolina? They're doing so well and different this year. I don't know that it's a lot different. First of all, last year, I think with their team, they had so many uh, COVID issues. You kind of just got to toss last year away. You know, our team was lucky. We had a couple, but it wasn't, it didn't overtake our program at all. And, and we were able to manage it. And, uh, you know, we had an older team and we've talked about how my older team with mostly guys who were, veterans of the program I thought that gave us an advantage last year and then I thought we were good and so we we played like it um their team uh this year they've they've added some nice pieces some transfers they've got a few guys that have been in the program like Cousinard and Levesque and Bryant that are good players um so you get a kind of a nice blend uh I, I think they're they're playing very similarly similarly to to how he's always played with his good teams which is inside out uh, attack you in the paint, whether it's posting, whether it's rebounding, whether it's driving, um, obviously defensively, uh, just very tough to play against, hard to score around the basket. They just, you know, they're a typical Frank Martin team. And, uh, you know, they, they've got an experienced group, those older guys that have been there for three or four years. I think, you know, at a lot of programs like Frank's and mine in South Carolina and Clemson, you, you need some experienced players um, you know, that have been together a couple years to be consistent. It's hard to be consistently good. It, it just, it's really hard, um, especially in this day and age with transfers and all the different things going on. Um, you know, continuity is, is rare. And then blending your team and role definition, role acceptance, all those things. There's just a lot that goes into it that's more than even the X's and O's. And then, combine that with, and your team is trying to figure out how to play the best. And I, I just feel like they're, he's, he's found a way to make his team play uh, not only very hard, like they usually do, but I think the way they're playing fits their personnel. 
and there seems to be very good buy-in, very good acceptance. Um, and they've had a, an injury or two and guys, it doesn't really affect them. I think they have a lot of players. Um, and he's played a lot of guys. I mean, they they remind me more of our team last year when I was throwing out 11 guys and, you know, Hunter Tyson got hurt for a while and he was a good player and had some really good games, but we had enough guys to overcome it. And I kind of look at their team and I see a lot of the same things. They, they just have so much depth. There's not much drop off. And I think that's sometimes on our level when you're eight, nine guy, seven, eight, nine guy, or very similar to your three, four guy, you're pretty good. And uh, you wear some teams down and I think they're wearing some teams down. I know uh, on the football side of the rivalry, they've had on the South Carolina side, they've had coaching changes several times in the last 10 years. But you and Frank been there both, been in yeah. both programs a long time. How has that helped the rivalry, do you think? And and also the competitiveness of the games is it, it's like it's been. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Um, I think, you know, Frank and I have a good relationship, um, healthy respect for one another and what we try to do. And, you know, we recruit against each other some. Um, but, you know, we both know that it's it's really hard to win, right, and win consistently. And so we, I think there's respect for the way we go about doing it. I think there's respect with how our teams play. Um, I think, you know, we both, you know, really try to get our kids to play really hard and, and you know, do the right things and, and, you know, be involved with the community, do all the things that you want to do as a, as a leader of young people. And I just think that, you know, we've been at it a while that, um, you know, the longer you're with each other in the state, you probably get a little closer because you've spent more time together. And, you know, we, you know, because we respect each other, I think that that's made it a very healthy rivalry. Now we both want to win the game really bad. Um, but there hasn't been any animosity. We haven't had a bunch of negative recruit. I mean, like we just go about doing our thing, doing our jobs. Um, and so I think it's made it a very good competitive but healthy uh, rivalry. This game kind of serves as a springboard into the ACC grind. Yeah. Um, and you guys are in the, you know, the two game win streak. I mean, I, it's just one game, but can you speak to the importance of stacking wins? And yeah, bringing that momentum? absolutely. I mean, the last two games we've played pretty well and, and for large portions of the game and, and beat two very good mid-major teams. Um, you know, two teams I, that we thought would be good. Um, you know, we're uh, playing a bigger, stronger, more physical team in South Carolina, and we're going to see that again with Virginia shortly thereafter and, and a lot of the ACC. Um, so just, you know, you're constantly trying to build positive momentum, right? Momentum is very powerful in our sport, especially because the games happen so quickly. Um, you know, there's most of the time, there's not a lot of time to like <clears throat> always digest it and make a bunch of changes. And so when your team is feeling good, um, and you're in a good place mentally and physically, you know, your team has a much better chance to play well. So we all, there's a big, you know, phrase in coaching that you've probably heard that sometimes it's not who you play, but when you play them, it's almost more important that your team's in a better frame of mind and maybe you have time for preparation and, and then the opponent that you're playing, you can play a better opponent and still be okay as long as your team's in a good place. And if your team's not in a good place, it's hard. Um, and I think that's one of the real challenges is, you know, unless your talent is so much better, you know, it's hard to have your team in a good place for four straight months. Basketball is a long season. Uh, your kids are dealing with a lot. Um, the school part of it, girlfriends, voices in their heads outside of our locker rooms, um, life in general, COVID. I mean, there's just a lot of things that can create bumpy road for you and get your team off kilter. And you might be off kilter for eight or nine days and play three games, and it can be really problematic. And so uh, the spirit of your team, the morale of your team as a head coach, you're constantly coaching spirit, morale, you know, trying to have a pulse on your guys, get them in good places. You know, sometimes these guys are doing great. There's one or two guys over here that they're in a little bit of a bad place. And so now you got to try to bring them back in the fold. And then it, somebody else all of a sudden gets a little sideways because they're not playing as well or maybe they don't get quite as many minutes as, as they would like. Um, and so there's a constant adjustment that, you know, as coaches is really challenging, um, but is extremely important. Anybody on Zoom? <laughs> Anybody on Zoom?
Can you hear me? This is Matt. Yes. Hey, sorry. Um, I know you said you talked with your team and told them that there was a chance the game might not happen. I was just wondering if you talked with Frank or if Graham talked with Greg Tanner or kind of just anything yeah. updates latest on exactly where things are. Uh, I have not talked with Frank, but I know Graham talked with Ray. I believe last night Graham called me and and uh, I know South Carolina is testing today and waiting for results. And I think, you know, we'll know more after those results. Uh, you know, I know they have a positive or two. And uh, so they're trying to, to see how, you know, how much more is it spread? Um, you know, I don't know much beyond that. I'm sure we'll find out here later this afternoon. Most time we take tests in the morning, we get them in late afternoon. Uh, so I would assume that and then, you know, kind of begin to go from there. The doctors, I'm sure, will talk and have talked and will continue to talk. And um, a lot of it will be based on what they say as opposed to Frank and I. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else? All right, all good. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Yep. Thanks for coming. Yes, sir.